Want to see how I transform these outfits using shoestrings? Keep watching. What's up gorgeous people? It's Amber. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you some quick, easy DIYs with shoestrings. I like to use shoestrings in a lot of my DIYs because it is a quick, easy way to transform something or make something so that it fits a little bit better on your body. So I bought a lot of stuff. Oh, it was like a few months ago from swap.com and I was supposed to do this full haul for you guys and everything. And that just never happened because I just got too busy and had all kinds of other hauls. I needed to review with you. So that one never actually happened. But all of the pants that I got today came from swap.com. Maybe a couple of shirts came from there as well. But the problem is, as much as I love the pants, I love Adidas pants. I think they're great. I just want them to like suck in a little bit better um, towards the bottom, well, the capris, towards the bottom of the capri. I don't like the, the wide leg capri situation. I just don't feel like it looks good on me. I don't feel comfortable with it like that. So I'm going to show you a quick, easy way that you can fix something like that if you have this same problem. And the goal for today is no sew. I have never done a no sew project on this channel yet. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do this today. I'm going to hopefully pull this off. I haven't done it yet. Normally I have the DIYs ready for you guys. And I'm just telling you guys what I'm going to do today. We jump into it. I do it. I give you my final thoughts and I'm done. Well, I haven't done the DIYs yet. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to put all of the clothes on for you as they are. And then we're going to do something to them to make them a little bit better. And then I'll show you my final uh, outcome after I transform them. I hope. <laughs> so all of today's outfits will be transformed using shoestrings. Maybe some elastic. We'll see. I'm not sure if I'm going to throw the elastic in there or not, but the goal is to use just shoestrings. So without further ado, why don't we jump into how we're going to transform these outfits with shoestrings. Let's do it. Okay guys, as always, materials are in the description box below, but I wanted to start by showing you these outfits before we start working on them. And they're just basic Adidas pants with t-shirts. That's pretty much what every single one looks like. And to be completely honest with you, the transformation is not going to be that dramatic when it's over, but it's just enough transformation for me to feel comfortable enough wearing these outfits. Now these are the next two, and again, just basic t-shirts with uh, Adidas pants. That's literally what these all are. Every single pair of the Adidas pants came from swap.com for very minimal cost, and I highly suggest that you check out their site. It's pretty awesome. I think I got all of these for like, I don't know, $5 to $7 per pair. Pretty good deal. Now that you've seen what they look like before, let's go ahead and jump into working on these pants. Hey there, Amber here. Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you're enjoying this video, I have so many more like this one and many more to come. So make sure that you're subscribed and you've clicked the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video, you never miss any of the fun projects I have going on here. Let's jump back into what we were doing. Okay, so we're gonna start by working on the Capri pants and most Adidas pants have three stripes down the side. So what I wanna do is take that center stripe and I want to seam rip out just enough of it to be able to get my shoestring in. So I'm grabbing my seam ripper here and I'm showing you that you definitely don't wanna go beyond that hemline there. You just wanna seam rip out a few of the stitches just enough to be able to get the shoestring in. So now that I'm zoomed in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just seam rip out a few stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and get a couple more out because I do need to kind of get in there with my scissors and everything to cut a little slit to be able to slide the shoestring in. So I'm just seam ripping just enough. I don't want to go anywhere near that hemline because it will all come apart and that's not what I'm trying to do here. So now that I've done that, I'm going to take some really sharp scissors. I suggest short scissors like this. I will link this pair in the description box below. And you're just going to snip the tiniest bit of fabric. And you want to make sure that you're not going through to the other side. I know it sounds difficult, but really it's not. Just snip the slightest bit just like I did there. Then slide your scissors underneath and cut just a little bit more so that you can slide the shoestring in. So it'll look something like this and I didn't go through to the other side. That's what I'm showing you there. Make sure you don't go through to the other side. I mean, it won't be the end of the world if you do, but just do your best to not make that happen. So now that I've done that, I'm going to take my shoestring 
and then I'm going to slide it in there because there's already a casing here. I don't need to recreate the casing. So I'm just going to work this in just like I would any other like thing that I'm putting through a casing. So a lot of people like to put a safety pin on the end of it, but when you're using a shoestring, I don't feel that's necessary because you have that pointed hard tip to work through the uh, casing. But if you don't feel comfortable doing it that way, you can always add the safety pin. That's up to you. I don't feel it's necessary. I feel it gets more in the way than actually helps when you're working with shoestrings. Now that I'm at the end here, I'm just going to go ahead and weave it through that little hole that I made and just pull it right through. Just like that. So now I'm just gonna pull it through the rest of the way. I'm going to try to make each of the ends as even as I possibly can. And just to give you guys an idea of what I was trying to do here, as you tighten it, look, it'll tighten it around your leg. You tie your shoestring off, looking pretty awesome. Loving it so far. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other pant leg and most of the other pants. Now I wanted to show you these here because they don't have the three stripes down the side. So what you're gonna wanna do here is just pick your pants up and line up those two stripes that they have. And then you're gonna wanna cut a small um, piece of the fabric just like we did before in the center. So when you fold them in half and line up those two stripes, that will become your center. So you're just going to snip just a little bit like we did before. You're definitely not gonna wanna go anywhere near that hem as I keep indicating to you guys because we don't want that to unravel that would not be what we're trying to do here see just big enough to put your shoestring in so i'm going to do the exact same process that i did with those other pants i'm going to slide it into the casing well it's actually the hemline i'm calling it the casing because that's what we're using it as to put our shoestrings through the whole point of this is just to add a small detail to the bottom of the capri and cinch them in so that they're not like wide leg like they were i just didn't like the wide leg look this is just a quick easy fix if you don't like that look as well you could also use elastic here and do this exact same process and simply tie it off into a knot and slide it into the inside of the capri I like the look of the shoestrings because it adds a nice fun detail and if you don't want yours to be as long as mine, just buy a shorter pair. Just going to tie it off, show you guys, see how it cinches up and you're not going to see the beginning or end of where you cut that so don't even worry about what the cut looks like. Look, it's completely covered up. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the shirts here. My thought process here is to use this shoestring and these buttons to add a nice detail to the bottom of the shirt. I got these buttons for 25 cents each at Joanne Fabrics. And the problem is that the holes were a little too small for the shoestrings, and I'll show you how I fixed that problem here in a second to make them work. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a button to each side of the shirt. So my thought process here is to weave one shoestring through the front of the shirt and one through the back of the shirt to make that happen. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the shirt and we're gonna cut that small hole as we've been doing with everything else, just making sure not to go beyond where the hem actually begins. This one is considerably smaller than what we were working with with the pants. So if you have one like this, just be careful. Make sure you are not cutting all the way through that hem because there's no need to. You just need a small little slit to be able to slide your shoestring into that bottom part of the shirt as I'm doing here. So this is exactly the same process as we've been doing. I'm going to slide the shoestring into the bottom part of the shirt here, and then I'm just gonna work it all the way through to the other side. Now, had I thought things through, I would have marked the other side where I needed the other hole to be and made the hole, but I forgot to do that. So you're gonna see me stop midstream here and be like, oh, I should have marked that. So I went, grabbed a pin. Now I'm back with a pin, marked my spot. So I'm gonna work it in the rest of the way. But in reality, I could have just cut the hole instead of marking the spot. <laughs> but you know, whatever, it, it gets the job done in the end here. So now I'm to where the pin is. I know that I need to put a little hole there to put the shoestring through. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm cutting the little hole as I did on the other side to weave that shoestring through the other side. Okay, so now I'm taking it and pulling it out the little hole that I just made. So now we have a shoestring in the front part of the shirt. Half the battle's over. <laughs> 
So I'm trying to line this up here. And honestly, guys, I played with this for like ever trying to line these shoestrings up. I don't know why I was making such a big deal out of it, but I was. And it took me like forever. And honestly, you don't really need to worry about that at this point. You just need to worry about it once you put it on. So at any rate... I have them to where I think that they should be. So I'm going to go ahead and take the button. And this is what I did to fix the problem with the button holes being too small for the shoestrings to fit through. So as you can see, I'm gonna try it. And yeah, definitely not gonna work. So I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers and I'm just going to maneuver that shoestring so that it fits into the hole. Now, of course, it's going to get stuck again, but all you do is take your pliers and pull it the rest of the way through. Easy solution if your buttonholes are just a little bit too small for the shoestrings to fit through. So now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and weave this other shoestring through the back part of the shirt. So the holes are already there. I'm going to use the same holes that we already have, and I'm just going to weave this through just as I did on the front side of the shirt. The whole purpose of using the two shoestrings is obviously to put them through the buttonholes to have that nice button detail on the side of the shirt. And I really wanted everything to be all the same color. Not sure why, I just kind of liked the way it looked. Found the buttons, thought everything was perfect. So yeah, that's what I decided to do here. Now that I'm almost, yeah, I'm at the end here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my string through the shirt hole first, and then I'm going to work it back into the buttonhole, just as I did with the other button. I'm gonna have to take my pliers, make it work. And if it doesn't work the first time, try, try, try again. So that wasn't quite right, so I'm gonna maneuver it again and try to work it back in there. I got it right that time, and just take my pliers and pull it the rest of the way through. So now I'm gonna tighten this up. I'm going to tie it so that you can get an idea of what I was trying to go for here. Kind of cute, right? I mean, I like it. It's not a major change, but I mean, I think it's looking pretty good. So that's it for that shirt. Now we're gonna move on to this Adidas shirt. And I really like this shirt, but the problem was when I bent over, you could literally see completely down the shirt as if I didn't even have a shirt on. So I kind of wanted to fix that part because that really bothered me. So my thought process here is to use the shoestrings to kind of cinch up this top so that that's not a problem. Now, I was nervous here, but I did it anyway. So snip, snip, let's just go. So I just snipped a little hole into the shirt and fed the shoestring through. Obviously the goal here was to have the button be in that front center part. So then I was like, oh man, I might need to measure here because if I don't line this up right, it's really gonna look kind of funny. So of course I didn't have a tape measure in my sunroom. I just grabbed the tape measure that I had. Works fine, it measures, right? You know, whatever. So that's the one that I used, measured the distance that I needed the cut to be at. And then I marked it with a pin first to kind of just make sure that I had everything like in the right spot. So I'm gonna fold it in half, make sure they're matching up, looking pretty good. So I go ahead and just go for it and make the cut. So then I'm gonna go ahead and feed that shoestring, the other part of that shoestring through that little hole there. And that's the first part of it. So now I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, now what? We got that part done, now what are you gonna do? I really wasn't sure. So I literally played with this for quite a few minutes, like trying to work the other button in. How am I gonna work the other button in? How is this gonna look? What am I trying to do here? Like I really was confusing myself like crazy. And the reason why I included this part is because if you guys ever run into problems like this, just work with it for a little bit and decide what you think works. I mean, as you can see, this isn't working for me. So I take it apart I do it again and keep playing with it until I find what I think will work best. So what I finally decided on was to go ahead and weave the shoestring in again. So I'm gonna have to make another cut. This time I just eyeball it. I, I like to eyeball things and just go for it. And this, I felt comfortable doing that with this part of it. So I went ahead and made the cut, put it through, and then I'm just gonna kinda eyeball where this other side needs to be and just make the cut and then put it through. So then after I did all of this part of it, I was looking at it again, like, okay, now what? You know, I'm just really making this a lot harder than it needed to be. I wanted to work that other button in and I'm not really sure why, but in the end I ended up not using it because it just didn't make sense to. So all I ended up doing was that final, the final two holes that you saw me put in there, that's all I ended up doing. And then I ended up cinching, cinching this up and tying it into a bow. And I ended up liking the way that it looked. Like as it's laying here on the table, it's probably not gonna look very good to you guys, but 
I think, in my opinion, it looks good when I put it on. So obviously I added that button, looked at it and was like, okay, that looks crazy. I don't like it at all. So I took the button off again and then just rolled with it without the button, which actually worked out well for me because then I was able to use that button on the bottom of the shirt. So this was the final thing I decided for the top. Looks kind of crazy sitting there, but once you see it on at the end, I think it looks good. Maybe you guys will think I'm out of my mind. I don't know. So now we're gonna go ahead and feed just one shoestring through the bottom of this shirt and we're gonna use that button to cinch it up. So obviously I did the whole same process. Now I just added that button on the end here and then see, it just cinches it up just like that. So that's gonna keep it in place because you don't have as much uh, shoestring on the end of there to work with. So the shirt is complete. Okay, so for my final shirt here, I'm going to go ahead and add some buttons to it. Now this is no sew, as I promised. So I'm gonna add these buttons with this black shoestring. So at first I wasn't really sure how I was gonna do this either, but I ended up figuring it out. So obviously I put the shirt on and then I decided where I want my buttons to be and marked them with a pin. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just start making the cuts that I need to make to get these buttons onto the shirt just like I've been doing all along, making a very small cut, just enough to get the shoestring through. You don't need large cuts here at all, guys. So don't make these holes very big because that will definitely not work out well for you. So I went ahead and fed the shoestring through the back of the shirt. Now I struggled with this too, and I include all of this in here so that you guys just realize everything doesn't work out right the first time. So just keep playing with it and you'll eventually figure it out. If you need to walk away, walk away. So as you can see, I went ahead, fed it through, and then I put it through back through the shirt. And I'm like, well, that's not gonna work. I mean, how is that gonna stay in place? I'm like, what the heck am I thinking about here? I'm like, yeah, so that's not gonna work. So after looking at it for a second, I pull the shoestring back out and then I feed it all the way through to the point where I just need I leave enough there to be able to tie it off. So then I go ahead and thread it back through the other two holes and then it pulled completely out of the shirt, you know, whatever. I just feed it back through. I mean, I was just struggling with this and I don't really know why. Nonetheless, after I fed it back through, then I was like, okay, we need to make another little slit beside the slit that, the, that we already have. So I make the little cut there and then I feed the shoestring back through and then I tie it into a knot. Ba-boom, yay! Yeah, I was pretty uh, happy when I was like, okay, yeah, I made that way harder than it needed to be. So I tie it into a really tight knot and then I cut off my excess. And after I cut the excess off, you're gonna wanna go ahead and heat seal these ends with a lighter. Now, I do this as my fan is on, my ceiling fan, yeah. So as you can see, the flame just, you know, poof, out, look at that. Yeah, boom, gone. Uh, yeah, so I would suggest you do it with the fan off and that's what I decided to do for the second one. I'm like, okay, I better turn my fan off. Okay, close up here and there you go. You're just gonna heat seal the end. So be very careful here, guys, using a lighter next to all of this flammable stuff. You obviously don't wanna get too close to the shirt and you only need to leave it there for a second just to get that end heat sealed so it does not fray. Boom, we got a button, yay! So that was, uh, way harder than it needed to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you again, just to make sure that you understand the process. So obviously we wanna take the end that has that hard part of the shoestring through and not that soft part. We're gonna leave that on the inside because it would be hard to feed through. So then we're going to go ahead and thread the uh, button with the shoestring. So that first thread, you're gonna to wanna to take it all the way to the end there. Make sure you're leaving enough to tie it off on the inside though. So I left more than I needed. I'd rather leave more than not enough. So then I'm gonna go ahead and finish threading it through the other side of the button. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and make the cut beside the current cut that we have, just a small one, just enough to get that shoestring through There we go. I feel like we're in slow motion here. Just enough to get the shoestring through and then I'm going to feed it through the back as I did with the other one. Tighten everything up and then tie it into a knot. 
obviously we're going to make sure we heat seal the ends as we did before and my fan is off this time so safety first kids and I actually left a little more excess than I did with the first one because I did feel like I was a little too close to the shirt when I was doing the lighter thing so just make sure that you guys you know adjust accordingly so this works out much better little fire blow it out no big deal we're good to go so heat seal the other end and then I will obviously add that third button to the shirt and then once I do we are done with all of these DIYs how fun right I actually end up adding a couple more shoestrings to the bottom of the shirt because I wasn't happy with the, the way that it looked but in the end here it is and let's see all of the final results guys so as always <laughs> that didn't go exactly as planned but everything worked out all of the ideas that I had in my head I was able to execute those but it just took me a little maneuvering to figure it all out I think it was making everything way harder than it needed to be and uh, that's where I like struggled and had some issues but I'm really happy with how everything turned out I am so looking forward to wearing all of these outfits because they have been sitting in a pile in my room for a few months now I think yeah about a few months now they've been sitting in a pile in my room and I've been wanting to wear them but I just didn't like the way that they looked as they were so I knew I needed to do something to them and I wanted to do something that was quick and easy and then I thought I would go ahead and share it with you guys because it was no so I know a lot of you guys out there don't have sewing machines or aren't very good at sewing or just afraid to do it so I thought that this would be a fun way to show you how you can revamp your clothes without sewing pretty fun right so I hope that you found these techniques helpful or useful in some way and I would really appreciate if you guys let me know which one was your favorite which technique you're most likely to use on some of your clothes because I'm always curious if any of the things that I'm putting out there people are actually utilizing and doing with their own clothes I'm always curious about that so let me know which one was your favorite and which one you're most likely to try I really appreciate if you would do that in the comments below so I hope that you found this video helpful or useful in some way. 
If you did, please hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, like, share, do all of those things to help other people find this channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to check this out and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye! What's up gorgeous people? It's Amber. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to do some really quick, easy DIYs with shoestrings. I forgot. Do it again. Can't ever get it right. What's up gorgeous people? It's Amber. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to do some fairly easy, fairly easy, pretty easy. Hmm, I don't want to say that. Do it again. So I use shoestrings a lot when I'm making things because it's just a really easy way to tighten something up without having to do a whole, like a boom. Glad you guys got all that. It's awesome. I am always thinking of ways that I can upgrade or make my clothes look better in some way that, how can I say that? <laughs> I'm always looking for quick, easy ways to upgrade my clothes or make my clothes so that they fit better. And shoestrings are a great way to do that. So if you guys have like, <clears throat> clearly have no idea what I'm going to say, do it again. So I thought it would be fun to try to not sew at all today. The goal is no sew. So I'm hoping that I can do that. I don't want to put no so in the title and then that's and then so. Hmm. Yeah, thinking. Do it again. <laughs> and then, of course, I will have the afters and I will show you all of the methods that or techniques rather that I use as I'm doing this. So I'm going to do this again. This just feels like I'm rambling on too long. <clears throat> okay, guys. My hair is like, I don't know, it's kind of sticking up. Probably from trying on so many freaking clothes. We're just going to roll with it. Okay. Great. 